My name is Neil Hurst. I'm the Associate Curator of Costume and Textiles here at the Clinton Williamsburg Foundation. Before us here, um, we have a cotton petticoat, printed cotton petticoat, and a printed cotton jacket. They match, and they belonged uh, to a woman who lived in upstate New York in the Albany area um, named Anne Van Rensselaer. The jacket itself and the petticoat date to probably the late 1780s, perhaps when she was married in 1787. Having clothing is, is really an interesting um, story that we can kind of uh, learn from Anne Van Rensselaer and sort of maybe even her, not only her shape as an adult woman, um, but also uh, perhaps her even taste in clothing. So for example, uh, the, gown, or the jacket is center front closing, which is what we would expect for the 17, late 1780s, 1790s. It also has long sleeves, also very typical. Uh, but what's very interesting about this jacket and petticoat is the fact that the fabric itself probably dates 40 to maybe even 50 years earlier than Anne actually having it made up into this jacket. It may have been uh, perhaps bed curtains or some other um, textile in the household, but that was then repurposed cut apart and remade into this jacket and petticoat. Now this is not unusual, this is very commonly done in the 18th century, um, but for somebody who is um, you know, even of the wealthy sort, uh, it's not, uh, not considered unusual at all. The gown, and, or the jacket, I, I keep correcting myself here because it is technically a jacket, um, is fairly typical for the um, late 1780s go going into the 1790s. But what's always nice is to see some of the various evidence uh, inside the garment, um, such as um, the center back of the, of the jacket has little eyelets that are worked to put boning into it. The, the boning is now gone, uh, and it was meant to be removed for washing and cleaning. Also, the, the pin uh, sort of damage that goes down the front here that we know that this garment was used repeatedly. Um, likewise, with the petticoat, we can see that it has its original ties to it, which is amazing, but we are missing one on this side, so it begs the question what happened to that one uh, over the history of the garment. The gown that you see uh, in front of us here is a really exciting example and one of my favorite pieces in the collection. The, the textile is just amazing. But it's a gown that came to the collection with a, a unique history, the fact that uh, we don't believe it was ever finished. There's no signs of any wear down the center front of it. And it's also, as you can see uh, in the image here, that uh, it's missing its sleeves. Um, it does appear that there were sleeves perhaps fitted onto it at some point, but they've been removed. But things like the trim down the center front, where we could see it's been basted to show where it's supposed to go, um, has been left unfinished. So a really unusual gown, sort of capturing uh, a moment in time where the gown maker uh, or the person who ordered it for some reason just stopped. Uh, and this is now in the collection, and it's a great piece for our tradesmen and tradeswomen who uh, work here at Clay Williamsburg to study, uh, to understand a little bit more about construction. Unfortunately, we know very little about this gown, but it was acquired in New England. So the person who we purchased it from here at Clinton Williamsburg purchased it in New England. So a good chance that this gown was worn in the New England colonies uh, and in the early United States, as this gown was probably made in the, the late 1780s, early 1790s. And one of the things you might find immediately um, striking about the fabric that you see here on this gown is the shine to it. It almost looks plasticky. Um, this is in fact a, a glazed cotton, and so they've applied a, in this case we know as we did scientific analysis on this in our analytical lab, a carbohydrate, probably a wheat-based um, starch or, or a wheat-based substance to the surface of this gown uh, to give it that bright, shiny appearance. This is very commonly found on gowns in the 18th century, but what happens is over the years, they get washed through various means, um, and we oftentimes lose that, that bright, shiny appearance that they once would have had. And so we're very lucky to have this example in the collection that shows us a pretty much untouched gown, unwashed, uh, with its complete uh, glaze on, intact on the surface of it. Clothing is, is really important. We can learn so much from an individual and so much from the makers who produce those clothings. 
uh, 200 years ago in the 18th century. Whether it's body shape, how tall somebody was, the different types of textiles they would have been using, uh, there's a tremendous amount of information in, in these single garments that we've shown you here today. If you're interested in learning more, you can always visit our e-museum. Uh, the entire collection that we have digitized thus far is on there. Uh, and feel free to check that out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's some wonderful objects on there for you to explore.